Right, what's up Dragon Brew? Today we're gonna have some fun and we're going back to the old plus one plus one counters, but this time we're gonna be doing it with artifacts. Cause this always just seems like fun and always get small updates here or there, but I haven't played it for a bit. So I wanna see if these new changes we're trying actually make a difference. So hopping right in, we're gonna play some Skrelv because Skrelv happens to be an artifact and can possibly make something hard to block or technically unblockable. We also have Teething Wormlet as a way to gain some life, but grow a creature. Some Ginger Brutes, uh, not crazy excited about this, but it does fill a purpose and we'll talk about that in a second. We do have some Iron Apprentice, which can move counters around, which is good. Gallag Readers, which makes artifacts, which is nice, or can grow itself. Obviously, we're gonna play the Ozolith because all those counters get doubled up when this is on the battlefield. And Quirion Beast Caller, because it's another card that gets bigger and we can move the counters around, which is always great. And anything that gets free counters definitely helps the Botanical Brawler because it gets bigger when other stuff gets bigger and it tramples on on its own. And then we also have Yoshin Dissident. As we get to play those other things, we will also get to grow a creature, which is nice. We do have Agatha Soul Cauldron, which does care about the Ginger Brute and the Skrelv. We get to get those abilities, which is nice. We are going to play one Kadama to the West Tree just because giving trample when there's all these token decks running around is probably a good thing. And we're going to play Sentinel of the Nameless City because, well, just a good card that makes an artifact every turn. And additionally, we do have a Clay Champion. Now, I will say one of the concerns we will have about this deck is worrying about things that destroy stuff, power two or less, or stuff like uh, temporary lockdown, something like that. But outside of that, this should still be able to hold its own against other things. So we're going to find out pretty quick. Don't forget, though, if you want to download this list, it will be in the description down below. You could play it in Arena yourself and give it a go if you want to. But first, let's see how well it does on the standard ladder. <laughs> We're on the draw with all two mana things. Okay, deck. I see how you're going to be. I don't know. Wow. Okay, we drew that guy. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we just play this, play this. This is fine. I think we're playing a Gallag Readers on two anyway. I was trying to justify some other play, but I think that's what's happening regardless. So it doesn't really matter. Oh, life gain decks. We're going to have to get these really big so that we could trample for a bunch. Yeah, I'm attacking. I mean, I don't think you're blocking. All right. Let's find some one mana things. That would probably help us as well. All right, well, the race is on. Oh, they have another one mana thing. Oh. Uh, they had a poisoner. That's fine. This gets us... Man. I think we have to go here. And if we go treasure... All right. No attacks. I don't know how we get past. I probably should have just put the plus one there, but I wanted the option to try to do multiple things to see if maybe we could do something. Yep. Yep. You got it, fam. They attack. We block. We get to put a counter on the... Reader, oh, they didn't attack. Darn it. Okay, well, that does limit us a little bit. All right, might as well put the counters. And those grow. And then we go ahead and go with this. Oh, uh, just... I'll take the treasure for a second. <laughs> and uh, no attacks. Actually, that uh, crap. I should have attacked with the Apprentice. Because if they block, I could have put the counter on the Sentinel and grown each of the Botanical Brawlers. Oh, uh, that was stupid. I mean, they're probably not blocking since they didn't attack into it last time. But you never know. Okay, that still kind of helps. Uh, we'll get rid of one of these, I guess. They also got rid of some of their only life gain options. Which is interesting. 
They might have done us a favor here, actually. Feels like they were a little trigger happy there, unnecessarily. All right, let's go plus one. Those grow. Play this, let's crack a map. Put the counter on you. That's excellent. Love that. And uh, we'll attack, attack. I mean, if they trade two for one, we're okay for that with that. Oh, you know what? They can also extraction specialist. That's funny. All right, in the turn. I could have cracked the other map, but we'll wait. Yep, specialist can bring that back. And then play another creature here. Yep, deep cavern bat. We have nothing in hand. All right. Fortunately, we did gain enough little bit here. So we will take... Oh, they don't have any attacking for six there. Huh. Even with vigilance, huh? All right. Let's go here. Excellent. Love that. Uh, we'll play this down. Put the counters on the thing that hadn't got counters yet. And, uh... Yeah, attack, attack, attack. Uh, opponent, those trample. Yeah, that's way more than enough. Oh, no. As much as we would like to go first. Can't with that hand. All right, this is better. Let's keep it. Um, wow, I'm going to toss Ginger Brute and we're going to take a gamble on good old Wormlet. See what we draw. All right, that's something, I guess. Back for one. Okay, the good news is we, I would say at a minimum, we were going to have like a 3 3 Wormlet or whatever, right? Well, no. Because we get plus one, and then we can give it another plus one with that. So now we can attack and trade. Or, yeah, we're going to do this. Uh, go ahead and just put a plus one on the greeters, since we're getting a treasure. Anyway. I will, I'm not even going to attack here. Because I don't really want to trade either of these. I think, exactly, if they're doing the same thing we're doing, we stand to have a bigger positive outcome by just not messing around here. So, ah, oh, well, that's something. Um, hmm. We do this. Get a treasure. Put the counter here so that won't die. We'll try to put this here. Oh, another one? Jeez. Um, I don't know if we need another one. We kind of just need more mana things here. Yeah, let's attack. Yeah, put the counter here. All right, opponents at eight. And they didn't even block there with the 2-1. I don't know why that was. Yeah, you have a Skull Spore Nexus? I, okay, sure. Um, We have four mana now. What is it? Eight. Is there a way we can just make this enough by putting counters on the dissidents? If we go here. Uh, we'll get a 
plus one. Then we go here and we'll make two artifacts. So we'll go treasure, treasure. And then those all trigger, put the counters on the dissidents. And then if we attack, they block the two biggest ones and take eight. Yeah. All right. I mean, we have enough life, we wouldn't care anyway. A bunch of fours and fives attacking. Yep. That's how you want this to work. <laughs> oh, this is cute. Ripple Beast Caller Sentinel. Okay. I almost want to go Beast Caller, Beast Caller, one mana thing. And then see what we could do after that. But we'll see how it plays out. Alright. I mean, part of this is going to be, do we even get to hold on to any of these creatures? That's that's the biggest issue. But step one. We found mana, so that's good. Alright, so this is some type of mono blue thing. Because they have the ability to consider. The good news here, though, is, in all reality, is that... Beast Caller triggers even if our spell gets countered. Oh, Brawler. Dang. I think I'm just going to go here and let it get countered, and we'll attack for three. Like, we know it's getting countered, but that's fine. And then next turn, we can try to play two things. It would be awesome if you decided to just... I was going to say, play a Haughty Jin there. That would be great. Then we'd just be able to attack past it and could have got these out without too much concern. Hmm. Okay. Let's try this. This probably gets countered. Or maybe they just want to bounce a Beast Caller. I don't know. That could also be reasonable. What is that? Counter target spell unless the controller pays two. Suspect up to one target creature. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll pay. Like, why not? <laughs> like, I don't. Sure. That just felt a little odd. I'm just like, yeah, I guess I'll pay. Uh. Huh. Jin, sure, you got it, friend. We're gonna play a beast caller. Oh, they don't have any counters or nothing? Oh, here it comes, team. Yep. If you would like to trade, let's do it. Oh, they're just like, nah. I'll see if I can... You know what, though? If they have one of those draws that has, like, double march in hand, they could hold us off long enough, potentially. Because this could definitely turn this into, like, an 8 or a 9 power this turn. And we don't have any life gain, so maybe. There is a world where they could still have the right cards here. I mean, March is really powerful if they've got it. That we're not so afraid of. Nor that. Okay, they're dead. Because they would literally need us to just not even have a creature here, which we obviously have. We're going to have creatures of ginormous proportions. Yep. Get them counters, team. Big old brawler and everybody's attacking. There you go. Ooh, mulligan this for sure. All right, we'll keep this, scrap this, and call it a day. Can we beat this? <laughs> like, if they just go straight up mono green? I don't know. Well, let's find out. Okay, well, it's not that. Still could be bad, though. Rarely do you miss on a breakout. So just, how big is it? That's still big enough. 
And that's a mana if they want it for something else. Alright, got nothing. Oh boy, these next couple of turns are going to be rough. I feel like I got to do this. Pass a turn. Probably just blocking with the Prentice. If we don't, if we get a land playing Sentinel, if we don't get a land, I think we're just on uh, playing these things. But we'll see. We'll block two, or block three, take two. Try to put a counter here. Hope they don't have a shock or something. Okay. Oh, but life gain here is also good. All right. I guess that's what we got to do. I mean, we just get the life back we just gave up. But we do get a thing that lets us move counters. That's kind of nice. And we grow two creatures. So sure. We are at 15, so that's nice. I was going to say we both were a little land light, but they got a treasure and found a third land, which is bad. Yep. Okay. That's the good news. <laughs> uh, bad news, I think we just didn't get an extra land here, which is hurting a lot. Pass the turn. I mean, we can block Anzrag and just straight up kill it on one attack step. The Beast Caller dies, moves counters, so we don't get wrecked on future attacks, which is good. And we are at 16, so that buys us some time, but we'll see. If they get the right removal and stuff, it could still be a problem. Or make Anzrag indestructible, right? That's a problem, too. Yep. Yeah. That's that's part of the issue. No doubt. Alright, so if we block him... If that becomes blocked. Alright, fair. Then we will block here, we will block here, we will block here. And take eight. Uh-oh. All right, so you're going to have us take nine? And then what? I don't know what's about to happen here, y'all. Giving something in... Oh, tie bar stand. Yeah, that's fine, too. I thought it was going to be worse than that. <laughs> like... All right, we go to five. We just make this big. Unfortunately, that will be the end of the game because it took us way too long to uh, find lands. So yeah, we are dead ski. Man, that sucks. Destroying two land there has just hurt us too much. Oh, all right. Double tap lands, not cool. The only thing I will say here, though, is if we draw an untapped land, there is a world where we might want to like wait till turn three. If we play... Uh, no, nah, actually, that's not true. That's not true. I was going to play, say play Ozolith, then the Apprentice, but this is actually fine. Because this gives us a couple other options, depending on what we draw. Okay. So we can Brawler into Apprentice, or we can... Beast Caller. Hmm. I think I'm going to do this, actually. And if they just want to kill our creature, they can kill our creature, whatever. This isn't the most efficient use of our mana, but either way, we were going to be in a situation where we need to draw a fourth land untapped to be able to play two things next turn, so it's mostly fine. Uh, Yeah, so we get to do more damage during combat? Great. <laughs> that's awesome they turned one damage into three damage or four damage that was great we couldn't ask for much better than that uh, I'm going to do this and gamble that we find what we need I'm 
we definitely did not find what we need. So uh, that's unfortunate. Fortunately, that does not get hit by a cut down because it comes in as a 3-3 with its bonus counter. Uh-oh. Gonna return it into play and make us discard? Okay. Usually what happens when you see that. They have one of those types of cards since there's like three of them, I think, in standard right now. All right. We lose some creatures. We continue on. Still didn't get that fourth land. <laughs> Would have been nice. Virus beetle. Sure. I'm going to discard this, actually. And the trespasser. All right. Well, that's no fun. Huh. All right. I mean, I guess I'll do the one thing we can do. Man, we need another land badly. Now Wandering Emperor just wrecks our world. All right. Remove some things from the yard. We take a big pile. Come on, deck. Just an untapped land here. Please. It'd be great. You know, that's something. <laughs> like, I... I mean, we're going to get our board wrecked anyway. There's probably a Wandering Emperor coming here. But what are we going to do? I mean, if you don't draw land, sometimes you just can't play. Sure, why not? Got a cut down for us? Sure. Wandering Emperor for us as well? Why not? Okay, it wasn't at least, so that's nice. Virtue? Well, that's going to make next turn gross. Yep. Question is, can we attack through that in any way, shape, or form for a win? If there's exactly a creature land... Eh, well, now we draw this, but that's a bit late. What do I need to happen here? Alright, probably just this and then nothing. Man, that extra land is coming so late hurts. Now I'm trying to think, like, what sequence of things helps us here, right? If we get something that puts a counter on a thing, which could be any artifact, that could pump the brawler. Then we could... Ozolith to also pump a brawler. Well, that's, like, our only way to get past? <laughs> I mean, really? And then we have to hope their hand's terrible, you know? Which they obviously contemplated there, so... This is not good for us. Yeah, that's a shame. All right, can't attack. I mean, we have to just sit and play this game for a minute. Like, just have creatures bigger than theirs so we can keep trying to win the fight from here. Eventually, though... If they leave our Kadama alive, we do have a bunch of stuff with Trample. So, theoretically, as long as we can keep doing things, we can uh, keep this fight at least somewhat reasonable. All right, no attacks. All right, they have a creature land now? Yep. That's important because that's... For life automatic from their land in the glutton. Unless we can flip the glutton. Okay, this possibly helps. I don't think we're going to use it here, though. But it is a thing that could matter. Put the counter there. Go 
here. Honestly, I don't even know if it matters. I might just play the Igonjo, because their creatures are going to be too big anyway. I'm still giving up something. And we're probably doing all this just to have Botanical Brawler die, but... At least if our other creatures are big enough, we could, uh... Make an issue out of things. Oh, we still just can't quite try to attack here. So, yeah. They have something in hand, unless their hand just all lands. But at some point, I guess we just try to go for it with Brawler and just whatever happens, happens. Yep, we'll exile a Razor Verge thicket. Sure. All right, they're down to one card in hand. So now this starts to become a possibility. All right, can you do something? Because we didn't get a creature here. That's nice. Not going to gripe about that. All right, you've got 15, a bunch, basically. Uh, hmm, how do we do this? I mean, if their last card's what whatever we think that needs to be, then we're just dead, right? And if we attack... I'm trying to think what we do here. Alright. Yeah, alright. I'm just gonna do it. Oh, I don't have enough. Don't have enough. It would tap that. Alright, sure. If you got us, you got us. We're dead anyway, right? Um, pump this, I guess. I mean, we can pump the other Sentinel, knowing that we have the big dude on top. Alright. I mean, each one of these, like, the Sentinel may only eat one thing, but... Okay, that's great. If the Glutton goes to the graveyard, that's awesome. That's fantastic. That is a huge step in the right direction. Like, obviously, it sucks we're losing our Trampler, but that is more than okay. Yeah, okay, so we get the two big things there. And then we get the land and the night here. Because we have 11 power. And then they're left with 4-4, four, 4-3, four, four, but they're at 14. It's, all right, cool, we'll, we'll take that. I think we're good with that. That is probably one of the better scenarios we could have hoped for them to go for on those blocks. So, not too upset about that. Yeah, and definitely keep this, obviously. Alright. Whew, this... This was looking super grim at one point. Still not out of the woods yet. Alright, so we can pay... We have three, four, five, six, seven... So we can pay two green. Actually, we want to pay two white. Ah, dang, we're one mana short, really. <laughs> like to doing what we want to do, because we'd love to pay two green, two white, two white. But I think we just pay two green, two white. Uh, so this is just going to be two. Green, 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 white. Yep, that looks right. And then we'll put the counters on the 5-5. Five, five. And on the other 5-5. Five, five. Oh, wait. Put a plus one counter. Choose up to two other target creatures. Oh, for some reason I thought it was one less than that. Alright, well, sure. Works for me. And they trample, so here we go. Do what you will. All right. Oh, man. How did we get away with that? Ooh. I don't even know. Like, they swept the board. They killed a bunch of things. Disc like, ah, that game was nuts. That game was nuts. We stayed at seven for the whole back half of that game, it felt like. Wow. Wow. All right, we'll keep it.
Let's go here. And I think I'm just going to play an Ozolith. Instead of even playing... The, oh, well, now it doesn't matter. They get to take... Probably the Oz No, they're taking that. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess we play it. If our creatures die, they die. There's not much we're going to do about it. I only didn't attack here, because if they just have, like, Liliana, then we sacrifice the Apprentice, but I'm sure they have something else more worthwhile. Yeah, we're not blocking, obviously. Yep, you got it. Alright, so they're probably just going to kill the Brawler anyway. Nope, a deep care rat. Well, now we have to draw something hot off the top. That was not it. Not at all. I guess we attack with this? Is that on the Apprentice? Alright. Yeah, no blocks. I mean, if you kill stuff, you kill stuff. What am I going to do about it? Alright. Play this thing. Go double... Oh, X is zero. Confirm. Uh, nope, we do not want to play just green. We want to play white. White. Because this is up to... For each spent of up to one other creature. Alright, cool. So now if they want to kill the brawler, they kill the brawler. Like, that's obviously what's coming. No, they don't. Alright, well. That was not how we wanted that to go, but fine, I guess. Um, yeah, attack. I mean, this is kind of all we can do here. In the turn. Oh, they got a shield edict. Gosh dang it. Alright. Then, here's kind of the plan. I think we go... Here. I mean... Then we just sack this. But yeah, I think we're dead anyway from here. Yeah. Because then we're just going to be able to trade for the sleeper, and then there's just nothing else. Yeah, another Brawler's probably not good enough here, I don't think. Um, Is there a world where Brawler's good enough here? I don't think so. Pass the turn. Man, we just really didn't draw much here early. They drew exactly... Oh, and they had a Corrupt anyway. Yeah, alright. Well, double bats were off. Okay, yeah. This is us, it looks like. This is going to be a little weird because we kind of have to play Gala Greeters on 2 so we don't really get to grow the Wormlets. I mean, we don't have to play the Gala Greeters on 2, but we have to play the Gala Greeters on 2. The only time I probably won't with this hand is if I were to top deck a... Uh, Ozolith, that's probably the only way that goes down. Otherwise, I don't think we get a big enough advantage. Phyrexian. Okay, well, that's not so bad. Go ahead and go here. They can't block, so that's cool. We get a free attack. And then let's see what happens. Grilves Hive, so this is what we're up against. I mean, they could always just play a land and play uh, Glissa next turn, too. That'd be real. Alright, so we're going to go here. Making a treasure. Pumps a dude. Uh, pump this, I guess. Doesn't matter all that much, I don't think. Get a plus one, put the other counter here, and go attacking. Alright, and they're going to lose some life of their own during their turn, so that's not terrible for us. 
And right now, none of their creatures can block. Which we love. Jawbone Duelist does a good job of blocking, though. Especially with Double Strike. Uh, but not when you have an Igonjo. Uh, I need three mana, though. Dang it. If I attack, 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 I could play this. I could grow this, but then nothing else positive happens there. All right. Make it where you can't block this dude, I guess. And attack with everybody? Oh, you're going to bounce my ginger brute. That would be sad. All right. Killing this, hopefully. Yeah, you can't protect the inset. That's a land. It's not white. So you're going to need an actual spell to save it. Oh, opponent. That's not... That doesn't... Okay. Oh, well, sure. Yep, not how that works. All right. Uh, in the turn, I suppose. Opponent goes to three. Yeah. Okay. We'll take that one. Oh, we'll keep this, but it's very suspect. <laughs> we we got to get that extra land, or this doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, sadly, if this is one of those, like, graveyard lands, whatever decks, like... Okay, this is Merfolk. Fair enough. I say it. may not even be Merfolk, honestly. Uh, since I have this land, I think I'm just going to go here with Query and Beast Caller, because then I could have my choice of Gallag Readers plus Ginger Brute, or I could just Sentinel. We'll see which is better, based on what they do here. They have their own Sentinel. All right, so then we're probably going to be, I don't know, having a 4-4 four, four Beast Caller here is probably fine anyway. So let's, I mean, if we do that, nah, I'd rather have the treasure here, actually. And then play this, so even if they bounce something, we just move the counters. Which is fine. So that, that gives us some other options next turn. Also, if we get treasure for another turn or two, then we have access to Clay Champion, which does some silly things, and that's a lot of fun. Yeah, we're definitely blocking if you attack opponent. That was about to be real. Um, hmm. This won't get countered from anything this turn. That's kind of sad, actually. All right, I think we do it anyway, though. And then we just get another treasure. Tide Binder. All right, sure. Uh, treasure? We'll go plus one. Yep, no attacks. I mean, Tide Binder's not a bad play there. It just, I mean, now we get to block with Beast Caller and we just don't get to move counters, but that's fine. In the grand scheme of things, it matters not. All right, so they're getting close to comboing us if they get another Forensic Researcher. Oh, why were you tapped? Why were you tapped? We'd have been able to go off and do crazy shenanigans this turn. We like shenanigans around here. All right, so now I have to think about, is it worth it for us to just go ahead and do this for two anyway? Uh, or yeah let's go ahead let's just go uh yeah zero confirm we're gonna play green green white white that's gonna get a counter we'll let this get a natural plus one on its own you got a one two three two one three sure put counters we'll just get a really big botanical brawler here <laughs> Uh, 
And uh, yeah, I guess we attack, attack. Because why not? I guess I attack with Ginger Brute and just spin the treasure at this point. So that's fine, I guess. I mean, because if they have another researcher, well, I guess the other one would have summoning sickness, so we wouldn't be dead yet. And then we'll have something in the graveyard that we could use with a soul cauldron. So we open up a few options here. I was going to say, you might as well block with the Tide Binder, because once it's dead, it doesn't do anything else. All right, sure. All right, Deep Root Wayfinder. I like that card, too. I mean, if they tap, we'll double block the Sentinel. I'm still down. Yeah, exactly. That wasn't going to stop me at all. Tap something on our turn. There. Tap the monster. I can respect that. Oh, this is a thing, though. Another Tide Binder? Spell Pierce. Uh, do we care about Spell Pierce? Yeah, I think I'm going to pay it. Guess if you just have another one, you have another one? Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, if you have it, you have it. Whatever. We're attacking. Love it. We'll take down that 3-4. Okay, that makes more sense. Because I was like, if you give me that, I am definitely taking that block all day and twice on Sundays. This is cool that they had those counters, though. Because if they didn't, we get to Ozolith put counters and then Soul Cauldron put counters next turn. And they'd have been dead. Uh, we are definitely double blocking here, opponent. I don't know if you're aware. Alright. Then their new token, they could make into two twos or whatever, right? Three threes? That's fine. But they have to save to block our... Or tap down our brawler. But they are able to make creatures every turn, so this does matter. I mean, these aren't inconsequential, inconsequential moves. Oh, they got to besage you. Gross. Mm, okay. Obviously, we're going to tap down a creature here. Kill the clay champion. Which lets us go get a land so we can play the soul cauldron here. Get a map. Play the cauldron. Remove probably your duders. To put a counter here. And we'll attack. Alright. Then we'll put those counters on here. Alright. Now we're at least making forces big enough that they have to really decide what to do now. Because we're going to have all types of possible damage here. And we can just keep making the brute unblockable. I mean, you gotta be running out. I was gonna say, you gotta be running out of stuff in the yard. This is only collect evidence three. All right. Get this into play. Yep. You have a three three. I respect it. Well, that's a nuisance. Fortunately, I have things in our yard. So let's go to our graveyard. We will get, I guess we'll just remove this. That's fine. Put the counters here. Make this unblockable. I 
mean, they could triple up some blocks on our uh, Sentinel here. But then next turn's going to be ugly. And we have plenty of creatures in the yard for our Soul Cauldron. Yeah, single block might be the best play here for them. So that being said, if they don't deal with the Botanical Brawler, it's probably it anyway. Uh, Alright, I mean, we'll kill the three power thing. Alright, opponent's at six. We will play a land. We will... I don't even know if it matters. We'll just put this here. Don't need another Soul Cauldron here. I do not believe in the turn. Well, there's their combo piece. It just might be a little too late. Maybe not. They're at six. Oh, no, because we could make the Gender Brood unblockable and they can't really tap a thing here. Yeah. I mean, good combo, but unfortunately, I think our Gender Brutes got there just in time. Let's go to our graveyard, remove this guy, put the counter on the... I mean, they also have to deal with our big 11-11, right? I'm going to go ahead and pay for Gender Brute now, so I can't forget. Put the counter. Yep. All right, cool. Oh, man, okay. How do we feel about this as a whole? Honestly, it was still pretty good. I mean, it does have the similar issues you would expect. Like, if you get a slow start, you can be trying to climb back a lot on the back of some of your other creatures, which is tough. There were times I would have wanted something like, I don't know, like, Archdruid's Charm, you know, to be able to put counters and still be able to fight something. That could be pretty good, because we had green mana pretty much all the time. So that's a card I would consider, because we don't really have any removal or anything in the deck other than a couple of the channel lands. So that could be kind of sweet. There's also stuff that uh, puts a counter and gives indestructible. I think that's something we could play as well, like Gaia's Gift. That's not bad. It also gives a thing reach and trample. So, I mean, if you need that uh, until end of turn, that's pretty sweet too. So that's another option. And then just generally speaking, if you're going to add those, I would say replace the Agatha Soul Cauldron. Now, don't get me wrong. We did have one or two games where Soul Cauldron was nice. But there's also something to think about is like, if Soul Cauldron was one of those other cards, whether we could get rid of a permanent, whether we could... Uh, kill a planeswalker or take out a big blocker or a flyer like would we have won those games anyway right that's something else to think about as well which maybe so honestly if we just had say archdruid's charm instead of agatha soul cauldron or the other thing where gaia's touch or whatever that was right that puts a plus and plus one prevents you know gets trample and all that like that's probably a thing too so I don't know. That's the soul cauldrons of the spot. I'd want to replace something, but everything else actually came into play and did what they wanted. Uh, if anything, having an extra Kadama would be nice, but then there's a weird thing of, we don't have much to spend mana on. If we play more Kadama, I would almost say if we were going to make major changes, I would probably cut like one iron apprentice, the two soul cauldrons, to play, and maybe even one Dissident at that point, since we're taking some artifacts out of the deck, to replace it with another Kadama, another Clay Champion, and two of your choice, either Archdruid's Charm or whatever that was. That guy's Touch? I keep forgetting the name of that. Uh, guy's Gift. So that would make sense as well. So then you're taking out one, two, you're taking out four cards, replacing four cards. Adding a Kadama, add a Clay Champion, either Guy's Gift or Archdruid's Charm. I'm going to leave the list, at, list as it is because it played well in the video, but definitely would consider making those something else. But that being said, here's the list we're going to post up. It's got two Skrelv, two Teething Wormlet, two Ginger Brute, three Iron Apprentice, four Gallag Readers, three Ozolith, four Aquarian Beast Caller, four Botanical Brawler, four Yoshin Dissident, two 
yeah, I get the Soul Cauldron, but again, I think these at a minimum should be replaced. And then possibly also replace an Iron Apprentice and a uh, Yoshin Dissident. Uh, one Kadama the West Tree, four Sentinel the Nameless City, and one Clay Champion. And I got on Joe two planes, a Besaju, a four Forest, four Brushland, four Overgrown Farmland, four Razor Birch Thicket, two Restless Prairie, and one Merrick's. And I want to say, I know a bunch of people are budget conscious and you're often looking for another type of deck to play. We did play one that is very good and competitive that surprisingly played up like I think only eight rares or something. So you may want to check that one out. It was really cool. But that's all of you for now. We'll see you next time.